What's going on, everybody? I'm Dominic with Power Slap News. Joining me today is Alan. Alan, what's going on, man? Uh, nothing much. Just excited to be here, man. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to come talk to me. Alan, you're an upcoming Power Slap fighter that's been like on the second batch of Power Slap fighters. What made you want to enter this sport? Um, you know, originally I saw that Dana uh, had posted about it, and um, I watched it, and I thought, you know what? I'm a mixed martial arts fighter. I'd, I'd love to see uh, what this sport's about. Um, go ahead and apply to it. And, you know, always possibility of maybe a segue into the UFC or another MMA uh, league. So that that kind of like interested me in uh, getting started with power slaps. Awesome. When you saw the initial call go out, were you somebody who responded to the initial call? Or were you kind of like, I'm going to let season one happen and I'll see what this thing is all about before I put my hat in the ring? Um. Yeah, no, it, uh, I, I waited, I waited. So <laughs> I guess the best way to say that. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Um, I ask a lot of fighters this now that you've had a chance to compete and you've had a little bit of experience in the sport here, mm -hmm. I know it hasn't been, well, at least from what we've seen, hasn't been too much. What do you find is more impactful? Do you find the taller fighter, the shorter fighter, the heavier fighter, the fighter with the longer arm? What's the stat in power slap that you want to be looking out for that you want to be, let's just say betting favorite. What, what are we looking for? And I think it's willpower at the end of the day, because I I've seen tall guys do really well. I've, de I've seen short guys, like personally in my own match, I thought I was going to get knocked out by the guy I was fighting because I thought the shorter guy possibly had more of an uppercut type situation going on. And, and I would lose torque by having to squat down so far with my guy and, and that didn't happen at all. And but I've seen other short guys take on taller guys and just like just straight up knock them out. So I I couldn't tell you if it's a specific workout regimen. Of course, we're all physically training. Uh, some of us do MMA to try and enhance those skills and things like that. But I I gotta just say it's got to be willpower on some level. You know, to deliver the strongest blow. And uh, it, it's it's unique to every individual that's out there. I feel like. So. And that's the first time I've heard willpower. I've heard a lot of people say shorter. So I think that's interesting that you kind of had that same idea. Am I in trouble going against the shorter fighter? A lot of people had have mentioned to me that getting the squat and doing the come up is, is a lot more force in that explosion using your legs a little bit than, than being the taller fighter. I find that interesting that you had that running through your head as well. But now that you've seen it, you're saying not really. You're saying the person who's coming in there with the head focused, eyes on the prize, in there for the right reasons type of thing, they're going to be the one that comes out on top. I believe so. I mean, I, I think that's 100% accurate because, uh, like I said, I've seen it on both ends and I've watched several fights like over and over again just to kind of analyze that um, as uh, someone who will possibly be continuing on in the sport, obviously, I, I was like, man, I got to study this and see, uh, was it a stroke of luck that had me win this fight or was it something else? And I... So, like I said, I couldn't personally put my uh, hat on something and say this is exactly what it is. But per my personal belief is that it is that willpower. So. Uh, that Again, that's a, the first take I've heard on that. That's very interesting. I want to ask you a little bit on your training. Now, you mentioned that you've done some MMA. Now that mm -hmm. you're stepping into power slap, what has changed in terms of training? Is there something specifically that you're focusing on? I know a lot of people, um, Frank the Tank, some of these, uh, Vern, some of these people, all they do the... The weight's on the neck now. They say that that's a necessary one. Anything that you've picked up specifically relating to power slap? Uh, definitely. I mean, um, obviously kind of the same with the other guys, just strengthening the neck so you can kind of incur that blow. I I don't – I'm like slightly resistant on going too hard on that though because I, I don't want to bulk my neck up too much. I feel like a little bit of flexibility is good hmm. um, on receiving that hit. So uh, the other thing that I would say I do the most as far as physical – just like weight training and things like that go, um, obviously your arms, uh, but um, enhancing my core and uh, kind of uh, the shoulders and in the uh, lower back as well. So you can kind of create that torque, but obviously you work your legs. Um, if anybody's been doing MMA, you're working your legs regardless because you, you need that power. But, uh, but yeah, no, definitely. That's uh, what, what I would say obviously is the technique, you know, like working on my slap technique um, consistently, finding a bag or finding a bob to, uh, to go ahead and do that on. Um, it's pretty hard to convince someone to let me practice on them, obviously. So that that's the best route. So. 
I, I could imagine it's hard to get some volunteers to to line up for target practice. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> not not something I'd want to I'd want to sign up for myself. Um, you we've seen one of your fights so far. Went uh, your way. What are your thoughts on it? How how did it feel for you stepping up? Have you participated in any type of slap fighting before? Is power slap your first time? Power slap is definitely my first time in the, in this specific sport. So. Uh, the way it felt was, I mean, especially with the Nevada commission coming in and everything like that, like just gauging where, like how much of it is accuracy and how much of it is power. So I would say on my first two hits, I focused more on accuracy. Um, I got that foul. And so on the second one, it was like accuracy and power. You don't want to get a foul, knock this guy out, but you also want to knock him out. And on the last one, it was like, uh, you know, Ryan Phillips was in the background, like, just like, Hey, F and kill this guy, man. You know, I was like, all right. So, you know, just like at that point, it's like lose the accuracy, just go for the knockout because you're probably going to lose if not, you know. So um, at that point, I guess what I learned and what I picked up from it is um, having gone in there, like personally, I'm going to go more for power because I felt like when I focused more on power, I I got out of my head and uh, I was able to deliver an accurate but very powerful hit on that last one. So I, I, that's that's my takeaway on that. So being in, like you said, you're, you're, you're talking mental game. You're being in your head is a big part of it. Does the environment matter? I know you guys were at the apex, um, very little crowd. We went to the live event. Do you think that's going to be, are you somebody who thrives more on the crowd? Cheer? Like if the crowd was there, you'd be like, yes, that's more or having like no crowd is harder. What's that like for the headspace? Like, do you want the more noise or do you like the nice and quiet? I'm in there to do a job in and out. Man, it, you know, it just, yeah, I guess it is an individual experience. I, I love either, honestly. It's like I was in there. I mean, it was super professional. They had the cameras on us. You know, we still had somewhat of a crowd in the background there. I know they don't show that very well in the fights, but there were people in there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there were some very important people in there. So I felt like all of us were a little bit more incentivized to uh, to perform well <laughs> in, in that environment. But I got to say, yeah, absolutely. Something super addicting is walking into a ring and having the crowd cheer for you. You know, that's that's a very... It's a unique experience. So, yeah, I, I could just imagine just again, it was our first event. It was pretty awesome to, to be there. Going back to your fight, one of the strikes that you took, I think it was the second one, looked like it was really focused more on your neck. We saw the chalk kind of like layout after was seemed to be a lot of your neck. Do you think that was due to you being the taller fighter or is that more due to him kind of? He was really trying to get you on the button and, and didn't quite impact. Like, where do you think that that came from? And just to add on to it, getting slapped, do you, is it better to take it higher on the head, cheek? Or was that next shot, was there like any issue breathing after? What, what was the difference of getting hit kind of much lower? What was that like? Well, for me, honestly, I don't know what it is, but when I get hit, it just kind of energizes me. So uh, for from that perspective, you know, I like his first hit, he totally missed and I and I knew it, too. So, you know, I maximized on that dramatically by laughing at him and stuff like that. But uh, but yeah, no, I think there's a good possibility he was trying to hit me on the button. And that's why he was hitting so low, because I've seen shorter guys deliver a full hit without hitting the neck. And uh, I mean, from his perspective and from other people's perspective, it was that height disparity that uh, prevented him from delivering that blow. And I think that's why the refs didn't call that foul in the second one. Yeah. Um, personally, I think he could have easily hit me uh, like he did on that, on the third hit he gave me, which, you know, was, uh, I mean, uh, sorry, on the first and the second hit. Um, I mean, I, honestly, I really don't know. Cause they, now that you're talking about it and I was kind of reviewing the video, he kind of almost every single time hit me in the neck. And then obviously on that third one, he, he delivered it like that what it felt like to me was on the chin um i didn't really feel it on the neck until the third one which i you know obviously i called it myself i was like hey he hit me in the neck you know like <laughs> it was a full slap to the neck um but yeah no i couldn't i couldn't really feel it when he was hitting me kind of halfway there so it, it kind of felt like he was hitting me in the uh the chin a little bit i don't know man it it energized me i felt great like it, it gives me more power when someone hits me in the face <laughs> So we haven't really seen like like a like a real neck shot yet. I'd be curious, and I'm wondering if they've ever mentioned this to you guys behind the scenes kind of thing. In UFC, you get hit in the nuts, a foul will blow, they give you five minutes, you get some time. If you were to get hit something like, you know, like the chop to the throat and you're like, 
do do you get the additional time there? Have they mentioned like do off of foul? Do you get more recovery time? We've never seen kind of like a an equivalent to a nut shot in in power slap. Um, I think, yeah, it, it really just depends on the reps, right? So, and I mean, I know that's the same for the UFC, but uh, I think it just depends on the situation. If they feel that it was intentional, I believe they can just call it and it's, it becomes a disqualification for the other individual. What would likely happen, I think, is you get enough time to recover um, for that situation. They would, you know, they would double check, is this person able to continue on? If I wasn't able to continue on after that, automatic disqualification. If I was... You know, it would just be the amount of time it took for me to be checked out and medically cleared to go, okay, he's okay to continue on. So that's what I believe it is. Um, they may have changed the rules even since the last time we competed. So I'm not I'm not sure. They they have been changing things quite often. The the last change that we noticed was the the chalk specifically. They went from the powder to the ball to kind of stop it from getting into people's eyes and stuff like that. Now nice. that you've participated. I've also heard it was to stop the fanfare. They didn't like the fighters doing the whole and then like on the camera and everything. So I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. But yeah. what would you change now that you've done it? What would you think is uh, is is it the barrel? Is it the coin flip? I've heard people complain about the coin flip. Some referees catch it. Some let it hit the ground. What? Right. Where do you go? Do we arm wrestle to see who goes first? Like what's the <laughs> what's the change? You know, um, obviously anything that becomes more entertaining, gets more viewership, um, but to me would be an enhancement. So if if they got rid of the coin toss and it became something else that was more exciting for fans, I think that would be great. I love entertaining people in general. So um, I don't know what that would be in arm wrestle. Sounds cool. Um, any, anything really at the end of the day, you know, it's like who who hits the sensor the hardest or something, you know, like that. It could be anything like that as long as it got people – um, excited to watch the match, you know, kind of prepped or whatever. Um, I, outside of that, I mean, to me, it was a phenomenal experience. So, you know, as, if they're going to change anything, that's on them. Um, I like the barrel. I, I like the situation. If there is any little thing that they could do to make it a little bit more entertaining for people, absolutely. I'm on board with that. But if not, man, I'm excited to be there. So, yeah. We've seen um something we've seen too is a, a little trend is we've seen fighters show up some show up in cowboy boots some some show up barefoot. What are you showing up in if it's your main event debut? You got to make a statement. Are are you got any type <laughs> of special shoe you want to wear or you coming in barefoot? What are, what are you doing? Um, well, I'm I'm working on something uh, with uh, with the Kryptonian look with the slap. You know, obviously, um, you know the little Superman logo with the S. I I'm. I'm trying to get it to look nice for slap specifically. So I hope to bring that aspect into it. Um, you know, kind of floated the idea of like, do I come in more like Superman or do I look kind of like, I don't know, like a, a unique looking guy, like my own Kryptonian individual. So I, I, I would at least go for that, right? Like just a little bit of logo, just a little bit of branding there, but um, I'm not too flashy. So I, I would be all right with that. Well, honestly, I think that's the the thing in power slap that's kind of missing, and we get it every once in a while. Like the the sport is quick; we don't really get to see the build up with like the 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 Vaseline and everything like that. We don't really see right. We we see you right. two kind of lining up and then walking up to the barrel. I think if we got to see a little bit more of, I don't want to go full WWE, but a little bit more of some fanfare <laughs> walkout. It gets right. excited, like Slap Jesus comes and charges the hand and everybody's getting all excited. That little extra bit, I think, is just what this sport is missing. So come out in a cape. Are we going to see you walk out in a cape, maybe? <laughs> maybe, maybe. I'm thinking about it. I'm, I'm definitely thinking about it. So I think they... a big, big red cape, drapes to the floor, two pretty women come and take it off you, fold it up all nice, you know, do the whole thing before you walk on. I think, I think I'm leaning towards there. Hey man, you got, you know, we got to float it by Dana if you, if you, or your aunt and Frank, if they're cool with that, that would be, uh, that would be awesome. I like that. I like that a lot. So. <laughs> Rumor is fighters get a little more freedom on the walkout. At least that's what I've heard compared to like a UFC. So hopefully we get to see a little bit more fun there. Walkout song. What are you walking out to? Man, I I really love that Thunderstruck song that I walked out to. So ACDC, I don't know. It just gets me pumped. So I'm I'm definitely going with that 100%.
I, I like a song that the crowd can get into as well. I think that's really important too, right? I think that helps people kind of get into it a little bit more. What are your thoughts on Dubai season two? Is that something that has you really interested? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. I, um, I mean, honestly, that's what they kind of floated initially was like, if you do well here, there's an opportunity for you to, you know, we picked up on the show. So like, obviously I, that would be awesome. Absolutely. I want to go to Dubai and be on fighter Island and things like that. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. So they mentioned that season two was going to bring in talent from, I think they said Russia, Poland, South Africa. Have you heard of any, so any of this talent yet that they've been scouting? Have you met anybody back there that maybe isn't on the roster yet? That's just kind of like you're eyeing a little bit like, huh, maybe that's going to be my guy. Um, I've definitely, I've been on the radar and kind of watching those international matches of like, especially Russia. Um, like personally, Honestly, for me, if Dana, if you're watching this, I would love to fight a Russian. Like, I think that would be super cool, like Rocky style, you know, especially with all these tension here in America and everything like that. Absolutely. I would 100% love that. I, I don't know who he would choose or or who Frank or anybody would choose. But yeah, I'm I'm very pumped about that. 100%. So. That would be uh pretty awesome. Come out with like a, a Chael Sonnen kind of all America outfit, you know, maybe mix it up with a Superman costume. Oh, come on. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I think that would be awesome. I think these type of narratives like the USA versus Ru I think that's that little bit of fanfare is just what this sport is missing to really make it catapult to the next level on social media. I Speaking of social media, right. this sport gets a lot of hate. I see a lot of people say this isn't a sport. You guys aren't athletes. This is just some sort of barbaric craziness that's going on here right now. It's not going to last. What do you have to say to these type of people that are saying that? Man, I am so frustrated with that. Like, I, honestly, I'm angry. You know, I, I see it all the time. Uh, I'll see like a great post from somebody on Power Slap or something. I see someone post like, cringe, you're not a real athlete. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, I don't think you understand how many of us have done MMA, continue to practice mixed martial arts or do some other sport activity in that we are truly athletes. And this is a venue for us to be able to compete um, and, and that we do take it very seriously. I, yeah, I mean, that that's the number one thing I would say to them. Outside of that, I would say I grew up and when the UFC was coming out and everyone was like, this is just the most barbaric sport I've ever seen in my entire life. And I can't believe that anyone would watch it. And this is degrading America. And this is degrading the world. Da, 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 da. We shouldn't let allow this to continue. But then we look back in history and we look at pancreation. We look at current boxing. We, we look at Taekwondo and, and the Olympics. And it's like, you know what? Fighting is a part of what I believe to be the human spirit. And power slapping is just a new venue that uh, that we get to partake in in America. I would say that other countries have already been doing this. We already had the SFC come through. And Dana said, you know what? We need to regulate this. And I, I'm i going to go ahead and start a league. And I'm going to heavily regulate it so that people can do this safely. And so anybody who has any like criticism, to me personally, they always pull up a picture of a guy from the SFC. His face looks like it's going to blow up, basically. And I'm like, hey, man, that's not power slap, though. You know, and that's what Power Slap is bringing. We're bringing regulation and uh, we're bringing entertainment value to it, I think, too. So, you know, obviously the UFC uh, name attached to it is always helpful as well. But um, but the number one thing to take away there is it is heavily regulated. It is a fun sport, but we are real athletes. So that's mm -hmm. what I would say. Uh, and I think like when if people were to deep dive your Instagrams, they would see that, right? They see... Like, I, I'm going to bring up Azael, right? On season one, everyone just looked at Azael. And if you saw him from the show, you would think this guy doesn't train. He's just partying and he's getting into fights with people and drinking. But then right. you, you talk to Azael, you go look at his Instagram and he's grinding. He's an athlete. He's not exactly how they put, they, they did a little bit of jazzing it up on the show. It's a show, right? right. So I think that's something people really need to take a look Look at the fighter. Don't just look at the one event. Like you said, most of you have a lot of history, boxing, MMA. Speaking of slap fighting, uh, champ, the slap fighting league, JT, Karsu, Karsi Jiu-Jitsu. I hear he's got another one coming out, Tire Wrestling. I hear he's planning on bringing Sumo to America. Any Is of these real? type of things <laughs> interest you? Anything? Have you seen the car, the car Tire Wrestling yet? I have not seen that. Well, you know what? I did. I saw one video of it. That that was amazing. You, uh, I guess you're trying not to get into the tire. Is that correct? 
You got to keep one leg in, if I understand. You both got one leg in, and the goal is to try to dump the other person in the tire without getting your leg out or something. So it's pretty. It looks pretty fun. <laughs> I mean, to me, it's like okay. I mean, there there are these like respected sports, right? And there there's always something new happening, and there's always something new being created. And sometimes people like it, and sometimes people don't. But let's just take in a moment and just realize that there's an Olympic sport where we push something on the ice and let it slide as far as you know until it hits like a thing and then it hits another thing and and that's supposed to be some sort of a sport right like well they're olympic athletes i wouldn't tell i wouldn't tell them they're not like mm -hmm. I, I personally think it's hilarious but i, I respect them at the end of the day you know I, yeah so well, i go ahead go on ahead. that other end of, of olympic sports there and just to keep the ice one we got the you you gave us the the safe extreme there we also got things like the skeleton where it's like a zero to one game. If if you mess up doing like a skeleton luge, you die. It's not like a concussion. You die 200 plus K on ice and you're head first on a sled. And we, yeah. nobody bats an eye. Everyone says, go ahead, you know? So I do think there's a little bit of hate towards the sport that's geared towards Dana and the organization that you guys as right. fighters are kind of the front line have to kind of endure but right. i think you're taking it with a good attitude i think it gets under other people's skin a lot more you seem to kind of anger but not let it take keep you down you know and it's got to fuel you at the end of the day you know it's like anybody else and you just have to realize that like actors news anchors anybody like yourself like uh like someone might just take what you do and then just overanalyze it try and break it down and just say like man you're like the worst person ever right and you're you just got to be like, you know what, this is where I'm at. This is something I love doing. And this either will provide me more opportunity to continue doing this or other opportunities. And it's it's a risk I'm willing to take. And I'm I'm a healthy, very intelligent adult. I know that what the risks are before I, I step into the ring. And I, I don't feel taken advantage of. I To me, it's an honor to be able to participate in this sport. If they want to bring sumo to America, absolutely. I cannot wait to see that 100%. If I can participate in sumo, I don't think I weigh enough. I would totally try and do that. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I'm sure they're going to have leagues all over. Don't cut yourself short. It looks like a lot of fun when you see these guys go at it. It seems like a fun type of game. I don't know why it's never really made it into like the West here. But yeah, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I do really appreciate you talking to me. Before we let you go, mm -hmm. I know we can't talk too much about what's upcoming. Right. Do we got... A little hint. Is there something people look forward to? Are we crossing our fingers here. Are we going to see more of you in the future? Uh, yeah, absolutely. 100%. I, I believe I could say that. Like, There would be no reason why they would advertise me if they're not going to use me, right? So be excited awesome. for that. Please, please look at my profile and, and get excited for this next upcoming Power Slap match. 100%. Okay, before I let you go, where can people find you? YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. You got a merch store. You looking for sponsors? What do you got going on? Let the people know. Yes, sir. Thank you for the plug. I um, I have one current profile you can follow me at. It's on Instagram. So it's Thunder Slaps with uh, two P's and an S at the end, obviously. Um, and uh, you can also, if you're a sponsor and you're looking for someone to uh, tag your name onto a please reach out to me. Absolutely. And please reach out to me through the uh, Instagram account. Um, sorry, did I lose you there? No, no, you're here. We got you. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you're, if you're a sponsor, please follow me there. Uh, please message me there. If you're just an individual who uh, is thinking about following an individual on, on the slap game, please absolutely come and follow me. Um, I can't wait to show you the awesomeness of power slap. So uh, thunder slaps, uh, T U H or T sorry, T H U N D E R S L A P P S. Um, and that's Thunder Slaps with two P's in S. So yeah. We're gonna have it all linked at the bottom. I'm gonna make sure I DM you if you got anything else you want me to plug. If you get a merch store or anything like that going on, let me know by all means. We'll plug it in there. We love buying power slap stuff. We buy everything that we can. So by all means, if you start getting anything going, make sure you hit us up. All right. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your time, man. We really appreciate it. We're going to let you go. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you.